This Family Life News Podcast is made possible by the support of listeners like you. In the chaos of our times, some have turned to Christian nationalist leaders who appear strong and certain, and in the words of my guest today, claimed to be standing for Christ but exhibited very little of His Spirit. We're going to talk about how best to love our friends who've adopted Christian nationalism on this edition of Family Life's Inside Out, where we look at how God transforms His people from the inside out. I'm Martha Manikis Foster, and my guest is Caleb E. Campbell, pastor at Desert Springs Bible Church in Phoenix, Arizona. He's the author of the summer 2024 book, Disarming Leviathan, Loving Your Christian Nationalist Neighbor. Welcome, Pastor Caleb, to Inside Out. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. So, Pastor Caleb, in a nutshell, how do you describe Christian nationalism and its attraction to so many in unsettling times like these? And and how does Christian nationalism compare with the way of Jesus? Christian nationalism is, as I view it as a missionary, it is three things at the same time. It is a political ideology, a tribal identity, and a spiritual idolatry. As a political ideology, it argues that Christians should be in charge of the government to protect and propagate their way of being in the world. As a tribal identity, it's a way of referring to a unique people group who have their own culture, taboos, origin story, desires, dreams, fears, etc. And then finally, as a spiritual idolatry, it is a form of uh, what some call syncretism, the merging Mm -hmm. of uh, evangelical Christianity with aspects of Americana, And there's also a little empire worship in there as well, worshiping the power of the military or the economy. And so I see all three of those threads inside this movement. Mm -hmm. And it compares with the way of Jesus, not so much in the desired ends. What they claim that they want is they want a righteous country. They want to have a place where justice rules. Those are good ends. But the means by which they're arguing we should pursue those ends is not a cross-centered posture, but a sword-centered posture, Mm -hmm. that we should rally ourselves together as the church militant and take over the government and force our way onto these positions of power and these different areas of influence in our culture. And so the, the means of American Christian nationalism are in direct conflict with the teachings of Scripture, which call us to love our neighbor as ourself, to take up our cross, not the sword, uh, to practice the fruit of the Spirit and 1 Corinthians 13 love. And the fruit of that is that we bear witness to the kingdom of God, not as culture warriors, but as ambassadors to the kingdom. Mm-hmm. But but what about the military imagery that we have, especially in more apocalyptic writings in the scriptures? Yeah, I think that what the biblical authors are doing there is showing that there really is a battle, but it's not with, as the Apostle Paul says, flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. It's with powers, principalities, rulers, and authorities. And I think that's where the real battle is fought, not between me and another person, but in me. Which power sources am I going to give myself over to? Mm -hmm. Will it be the beast and the dragon, the leviathan, or will it be the lamb? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see those who've integrated Christian nationalism into their faith. You see them not as enemies, but as a mission field, which I think you've you've already described the, the heart of that. What tools do you think are necessary to go out into that mission field? Yeah, in the research I did for my book, Disarming Leviathan, I spoke with a bunch of my friends and peers who serve as cross-cultural missionaries, and three themes came out of those conversations. Mm -hmm. That is that we are to set the table of hospitality, study the culture, and show the inconsistencies of their currently held convictions. So, for instance, studying the culture, uh, when I think about American Christian nationalists, Instead of casting derision or shame on uh, their way of being in the world, I want to be curious, curious about their origin story, Mm -hmm. curious about their taboos, their fears, their desires. I want to be a student of culture, which every good missionary is a student of culture. Second, to set the table of hospitality, uh, my objective is not to argue about facts and opinions. Mm -hmm. My objective is to create a safe environment in which we can connect, not head to head, but heart to heart. Mm -hmm. And then finally, showing the inconsistencies of their currently held convictions, 
because American Christian nationalists, that, that word Christian is in there, they have at least some affinity or love for the Christian tradition or for Jesus. And so really the conversation is just reintroducing Jesus to the topic that they're thinking about. Mm-hmm. And so if, if perhaps one of my friends is raging about something that they heard on social media, I don't want to argue with them about the facts and opinions first. First, what I want to do is create a hospitable environment, lean into curiosity, tell me what's going on when you hear that. How do you feel when you read these things or when you hear that on YouTube, whatever it might be. And then I just want to reintroduce Jesus to the conversation. You know, what do you think Jesus has to say to us about this issue or this topic? Let's talk about that. And my hope, like any good missionary, is not that I can change a person, but that I can be faithful in the moment and that the spirit of the living God might plant seeds of repentance in the garden of their mind that would grow into the fruit of repentance, which is not my job. Only the spirit Mm -hmm. of God can do that. Mm -hmm. In that process, we following these guidelines may be reintroducing Jesus to people who have known him for who he is, Mm -hmm. but we might also be introducing him to people who were taught an easy believism that really already had this merging, right, mm-hmm. of um, yes. God and country, like like we're seeing. Oh, yes. I, I think that many people have been in earnest discipled into this movement. Uh, I've met people who have said that they came to faith at uh, one of these rallies. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I, I think regardless of if the person has what sometimes referred to as a saving faith in Christ, I think our posture is still the same. Uh, in Galatians 6, 1 and 2, it says, If anyone is caught up in a transgression, you who are spiritually mm-hmm. mature, seek to restore them gently mm-hmm. and bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And I, I think that applies to everybody that we come into contact with. Mm-hmm. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Inside Out on Family Life. I'm talking today with Phoenix, Arizona pastor Caleb E. Campbell, author of the summer 2024 book, Disarming Leviathan, Loving Your Christian Nationalist Neighbor. Pastor Caleb, I'm I'm guessing that some listening to our conversation feel discouraged. Mm. That's because they love friends and family who have turned for guidance to Christian nationalist leaders, and they've watched as these people have adopted the outrage, the, the, the spiteful and demeaning attitude of those leaders. What words of encouragement can you give to those listening who both love Jesus and love people who have become Christian nationalists? Sure. The first thing I would say is we can't change anybody. Only God can do that. So my job is not to bear the responsibility of changing someone. Rather, my invitation is to be faithful to Jesus in the conversations that I am invited into or that I invite others into. So I have found that just shifting my role in all of this has been helpful to my own heart because, you know, there's been rare a conversation where in the conversation someone has changed. Mm -hmm. Usually, change happens over time, and it's multiple experiences that people have that cause them to have that moment, that aha moment of change. So my role is to be faithful uh, in the long run, always open to hospitality. But then second, I would invite people to remember that the core of Christianity is the understanding that people can change. Mm, Yes, Uh, hope. That that repentance, the the idea, as Alan Hirsch says, of having a mind-blowing experience mm. where everything about us completely changes, that that happens. We have a, a history of it happening. We share testimonies in our churches of it happening. And I think for me, uh, remembering to hold out hope, not just for myself, but also for the people who are currently entangled in American Christian nationalism, just like the Apostle Paul, Mm. uh, who we find in the book of Acts was killing Christians. Mm -hmm. Jesus did an an action Mm -hmm. (laughs) in his life, and it radically transformed Paul's life. And I firmly believe that there are people who will be sitting at our dinner tables, that the Spirit of the living God will use our words or our relationship or our hospitality to bring about the fruit of repentance in their life. The frustrating part is sometimes it's going to take a long time, Mm -hmm. and oftentimes I won't be there to see it. Yeah, we won't see it. And so I'm going to entrust that to God's hands, not mine. Mm. 
Well, what a good word. Yes, thank you. Thank you for speaking with me today, and, and thank you for your book. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Inside Out. Uh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. My guest has been Caleb E. Campbell, pastor at Desert Springs Bible Church in Phoenix, Arizona, and author of the summer 2024 book, Disarming Leviathan, Loving Your Christian Nationalist Neighbor. I'm Martha Manikas Foster with Inside Out on Family Life. Thank you for listening to this Family Life News Podcast. If you've been encouraged by what you've heard, please share it with others and click the subscribe button to automatically receive future episodes. Family Life is a listener-supported ministry. Podcasts like this are made possible by your financial partnership. Find out more at familylife.org.